The enemies of the cross are not um, Islam, Buddhist, and all that. Those ones are. They are not. They are not the ones we are dealing with. We are dealing with. The real danger lies with those who use the name of Jesus, who use the crucified Christ. They mention the cross. They have a, a semblance of an assembly of church, of believers, a church. They have ties and put on suits. They carry microphones like everyone, like, like we do. They shall praise God like we do. They shall glory to God like we do. But the Bible describes this man as the enemies of the cross. Be careless. We cannot, we cannot afford to be careless. You cannot afford to be careless. There is a real danger lurking in church buildings, assemblies, gatherings. Some people taking the form of godliness. Taking it. They look like us, dressed like us. They have choir. <laughs> they have choir. Singers. Musicians, drummers, instrumentalists and all. They have a semblance of the gospel. But the Bible says, you need to be very, very observant. We will judge the persons by looking at their emphasis. You will recognize if this is an enemy of the cross because there is an example to follow. There is an example to follow. The Bible is loud on discernment. Very loud. It says to mark them. Mark them. So you have to be... Like, people usually say, I, I, I use the word calm down a lot. You have to calm down. Don't be an impulsive believer who is easy, easily tricked. That's a name. That's the, the work of a local church is actually to mature you, to make you sound in the faith, to make you strong. Hallelujah. To be sound. In, in the soundness of the doctrine, you're able to judge. Amen. You're able to judge what looks like the truth from the truth. Charles Spurgeon will say that discernment is not knowing what is right from what is wrong. But from knowing what is right from what is almost right. This is discernment. This is judgment. Hallelujah. So, you will have accurate discernment, accurate judgment, by having your heart absorb consistently the gospel truth. The more we hear, the more we receive the message of God, the more we contemplate the light of Christ, the better our heart is at recognizing what is true from what looks like the truth. Proverbs will say that there's a way that seems right. There's a way that seems right. It's not the right way. It seems right. It is not the right way. So, hearing the same doctrine of righteousness over and over is what will save you from deception. Let me say this at this point. Many believers are after the next in thing. What is the reigning doctrine? What is the what is the what is the next the newest dimension portals and things like that? If you are one of such believer who is easily tricked by high sounding statements, you 
then you're a, you're, a, you're a candidate for deception. Look at this. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Oh, glory to God. So the scripture is loud on discernment. It's very loud on it. You can't be closing your mind and closing your eyes when the matters of the truth of the gospel is being proclaimed. You need to recognize what exactly is this person saying? What exactly is this person saying? What exactly is, what emphasis? Where is it trying to put my attention on? Is it trying to cause me to mind earthly things? Or you want to set my affection on things above? These are the things you check out. You can't just close your mind and just, he uses new words. His phonics is on point. I used to say humorous in church. <laughs> that sound doctrine is not grammar. Sound doctrine is not Queen's English. Error can be perfectly packaged. One of the things about the works of darkness is that it is always shrouded in secrecy. Poison is not served alone, it's served with food. It's served with food. So we must be circumspect. Look at that. Second Peter 1 12. Wherefore I will not neglect, or wherefore I will not be negligent. To put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in this present. So, Paul says, You know this thing, but I will remind you. This is all about sound doctrine. It is not a new, fresh word from the oven, oven of heaven, a word from the throne. When you hear things like that, and it Tickles your fancy. Then you, you are on your way to, to delusion, to deception. They're about to be captured. He says, you know it. He says, do you know that? Look at it. I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, even though you know them. And you are established in the present truth. You know them, you are established in them, but I'll still remind you. I'll still remind you. You know them. You've You've heard it. But I will remind you. That is where your safety is. That's what Peter Paul said later. Says for you it is safe. So divorce from your mind that idea of new revelations. Divorce it from your mind. There is no new revelation. What we have is better explanations of the same revelation. The revelation of Jesus. Any revelation that anyone has that has not been revealed is a false revelation. It's a lie. The revelation of the truth has been revealed. It's been revealed. What we will have will be better explanations, better expressions, better gifts of the same message. So, this is books. It has not been updated to 67 or 76. We, we can have newer translations, which are at best attempts by um, lovely men to better explain or express that which had already been written. It's a translation, not an invention. Hallelujah. It's a translation. It's a version. It, they're not rewriting the scriptures. They're simply trying to explain, because that's what it is. It's an interpretation anyway. Trying to explain what is written based on their understanding. So it's not a new re revelation. It's not. So, you want to backslide? Keep having that has to want to learn new things. But it's the same thing that we, we know. It's the same thing that the Bible teach. The same things. And they'll just keep our hearts on. And just keep meditating on them. Keep learning them. Keep hearing them. We listen to people explain the same books of the Bible we read. And then we see insight. We see light. It's not a fresh word from the truth. It's the same word. The sincere make of the word. The sincere Bible. The doctrine. Which is according to godliness. You know. 
um, second Peter 3 verse 1, Peter also saying this again, uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, second Peter 3 verse 1, in both which I steer up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Steer up your pure, pure minds to remind you. Hallelujah. So we need to be reminded. It's very important. Very, very, very important. So anyone who is going to be a serious Christian, who is going to be a serious believer, must take the issue of his memory critically. We must learn to hear and hear again the message. We must. This is the safety. The moment you start treating casually the truth of the gospel, you won't honor and celebrate it. You are on the way on the path to deception. When the, the, the fact that you have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus no longer tickles you. You are trying to ascend the seven heavens and climb the seven mountains and scale the seven hills. You will land in seven troubles. Hallelujah. You must love. You must love to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So, 1 John chapter 2 verse 21, the apostle John writes this. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. But because you know it. Ah. Do you see how repetition, the, 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 the idea that doctrine should be re repeated is loud. I am not writing to you because you do not know. I'm writing because you know. You know what I'm writing. This is how your pure mind will be steered. By repetition. By repetition. Martin Luther was asked, why do you teach justifi justification by faith? Every week. He said, because every week the people forget. We keep pushing the truth for. It's very critical. We will need a serious reminder concerning the truth of the gospel if we must grow. We must be reminded consistently. Consistently. If we will grow. Alright, now, in the, in the art of teaching, Two categories of audience exist. There are those who are hearing the word for the first time. Now, that doesn't mean that it is fresh from the throne. It is simply fresh in your mind. You've not heard it before. We all started that way. One day, I heard, uh, I read from someone's material, how that the blood of Christ washed our sins. I read it. And wow. I heard it for the first time. Beautiful day in my life. I read. Now, when I read it, the, the, funny, the funny thing was that the person who wrote that material, as at the time I read the material, was already dead. He was already there. So it was not just written. The revelation was not just given the day I read it. It was just the day I discovered what it is. Hallelujah. So we have those who, we, who will be hearing God's word for the first time. This is your first time of recognizing that not everyone that has a microphone and a podium and a group of people saying amen when he calls in Jesus' name not every one of such men are the servants of Christ. Some of them are the enemies of Christ. They are just out there to corrupt the, the hearts of men. To turn men away. So, so you just heard it. So you have to be very vigilant. There is a pattern already stated. Is the pattern of the scriptures. We have the apostolic pattern. The system of doctrine, the system of truth has already been laid in the scriptures. Already. 
So yours is simply to follow them who sings or who, who, whose life, whose conduct aligns with that pattern. One wise man said, you, take, you go to church. Go, don't go to a church that is close to your house. Go to the church that is closest to the epistles, to the scriptures. That's instructive. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. We trust that you were blessed by the teaching. For further inquiries about learning course with Pastor Dio, kindly send us a mail at hagyocitychurch at gmail.com. We'll be glad to answer your questions. Till the next broadcast, we see Jesus only.